Hello everybody, my name is Jeremy and you're watching The Morgue. I don't have a clever intro for this episode because I have to start off with an apology. I already told you guys that today's episode was supposed to be a review of Age of Conan Unchained, the new free-to-play conversion of Funcom's classic barbarian-esque title. Well, sadly... I had a birthday. I know, go figure, right? But I had to socialize, and it pulled me away from my computer. God forbid. To such a degree that I didn't feel like I had given this game enough of a, a thorough going over to in order to give it a good review, a good, solid, respectful review. So I'm just not going to. I mean, it will come eventually. I don't know exactly when, but let's consider it postponed. In its place, today's episode is just going to be basically a grab bag of some great MMO newsy bits that I've picked up from the internet over the past week or so. The first of these is one that everybody's been emailing me and Twittering me about. Okay, guys, yeah, I, I get it now. DC Universe is going free to play. Well, I already said that they needed to last week, didn't I? With Champions Online and City of Heroes already free-to-play, and Marvel Universe also going to be a free-to-play when it launched, DC Universe kind of had to, just in order to stay afloat in the superhero MMO business. And, and just generally speaking, I think free-to-play is a way that players want to play. They want to be able to try out a game before they have to sink their money into it. So, good move on Sony's behalf, but i I got to admit, this kind of just makes me feel like, well... Now they can charge for their future expansion packs just like they wanted to originally with Fight for the Light. So they're really just having their cake and eating it too. Ah, well, whatever. At least DC Universe will potentially stay afloat this way. And as I also mentioned last week, there's a few good reasons that I'd like that to happen. If you want to hear them, go watch last week's show. In other free-to-play news, I have a bit of an unsettling announcement to make regarding Gamers First. They've decided to team up with a group called Ad Knowledge, which does what uh, many might be referring to as offers. Now, if the term itself doesn't ring a bell, let me point out something like, uh, how many times have you been offered online to do something like sign up for a trial account or complete a survey with the incentive being something else that you can use for something else? In the case of Gamers First, the incentives offer will be tokens that you can use on their in-game cash shops for APB and Fallen Earth. Meaning that when you log into these games, or possibly on the launcher, we're not clear exactly how this is going to be implemented, you'll be offered a number of things that you can do online in order to get free points to be used on their cash shops in-game. Now on the surface right there, it doesn't sound like a bad thing, but everybody knows that's done this with games like Farmville or other Facebook games, that these have a terrible tendency to become nothing but spam bots that just relentlessly fill your inbox with torrents of terrible things. So hopefully whatever Gamers First is doing with this company is going to be really low impact. Maybe just a special thing that you can actually seek out on their cash shop if you want to go that route. But it's not necessarily something that I condone. The only, the only good thing that I can say about this is that both APB and Fallen Earth do take place in worlds where advertising is, well, at least acceptable. Some of you might actually recall that Dungeons & Dragons Online tried this once upon a time, actually with the same company, and had such an incredible outcry from their community, they, they pulled out of the contract with that knowledge. I could see potentially people being just as up in arms about this being present in, with Gamers First games, but honestly, I don't think that they'll care as much as Turbine obviously did. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, if you're playing either of these games, APB or Fallen Earth, I would honestly recommend that you not use their offer service, and I'm hoping that Gamers First doesn't shove it down your throats. Okay, let's move away from free-to-play just for a second here, because I want to talk about something that actually I've never really talked about specifically on the morgue before, and that is World of Warcraft. In fact, one of the features that they're rolling out with their next big patch. I, I've never done this before. Why haven't I done this before? World of Warcraft is like the biggest U.S. MMO ever. Well, up till this point, they really just haven't impressed me. But with the next patch, 4.3, they're actually rolling out a series of mechanics and a system that I actually I, I find rather interesting. For a couple reasons I'll get to after I tell you what it's all about. Basically, they are rolling out a newer easier version of an upcoming raid. Uh, this sounds like a pilot program that's coming with their upcoming Deathwing raid, where there will be the standard 25 and 10-man versions, but there will also be an easier 25-man version. The way that you access this easier 25-man version is through their Looking for Group tool. In fact, that will be the only way that it is accessible, meaning that it's specifically keyed for pickup groups, people that don't have established raid teams or established guilds that they run with on a regular basis. These easier versions of the 25-man raid will include lesser loots. I'm assuming it's probably going to be on par with the 10-person raids. 
but will also not include a lockout period, which has been common with every other raid that they've included with World of Warcraft. Meaning that if you enter into a pickup group that's doing this 25-man, this weaker version of the 25-man raid, you won't necessarily be locked out of participating in that same raid with a different group, which is a haven for pickup groups. I can't tell you the number of times back in my day where I used to join a pickup group raid or a raid that a bunch of friends were on and they needed a fill-in, only to find out that we couldn't finish. And then I couldn't finish the raid that week because I was locked out for an entire week. Well, that just sucks, so they're doing away with it but only if you use the looking for group tool to team up with people that you don't normally group with. Now, to be frank, I see this being a huge boon to the WoW community. WoW is already very pug friendly, and the community has already embraced the concept of doing pickup groups and pickup raids on a pretty regular basis. But I have to voice my concern over the fact that other developers tend to look at what WoW does and try to determine whether or not it's good for them. I'll tell you right up front, I don't know of a single other game on the market that this would be good for. Every other game, to a certain degree, thrives on the community of tight-knit players that get along with one another, know one another, and have reputations. They rely on tight communities and tight guild bonds in order to remain a good, strong community. And this is probably just simply a size thing. WoW can get by without that because it's just so massive. But putting into place a series of mechanics that actually encourages fragmentation of your community to, to any degree by offering a separate amount of content that can only be done if you're not using your usual crew of known players. I, I don't know of any other games on the market. I could be wrong on this. This is just a gut reaction of mine. But I don't know of any other games out there that this would actually be a good thing for. So good on WoW, and that's the reason that I find this so interesting, is that it can actually separate itself from the rest of the crowd simply on the strength of its community, or lack of strength in some areas. But resilience? Aside from all the community-based hubbub around this mech's 4.3 patch, WoW is also finally, finally going to introduce cosmetic items to World of Warcraft. Oh, this has been a long time coming. I can't tell you how many times I've logged into this game in the past and not wanted to look like what I looked like. Hell, I went like two months wearing these bright pink shoulder pads with huge spikes. Oh, it was atrocious, really. Just very, very bad. Now they have transmogrification coming to the game, where you will be able to alter the appearance of almost any item in the game, it sounds like, to almost anything else. And, oh, this is the part I love best about transmogrification, even though it has an upfront cost associated with it, you will be able to buy separate storage specifically for cosmetic items. This isn't just your average trade skill hook-on where you have to take up more of your guild bank space to take care of this. No, you get all new storage, and that is going to be so nice. Now, granted, you can only use it for your cosmetic items, but anybody actually interested in the way that your character looks in WoW probably already has half of their bank filled with cosmetic items to begin with. So this is just a huge bonus to that whole side of the community. While we're talking about unique actions taken by MMOs, let's talk a little bit about Rift and Tryon Worlds, because they are making a move that I've never seen happen before in the MMO industry. This doesn't actually have to do with the game itself. This is purely a PR, a business thing, that the players happen to be able to benefit from and have a good time with. Rift is going to hold a 24-hour event in the middle of October that will be sponsored by Extra Life and the Children's Miracle Network. What this event is, is a 24-hour gaming session where the devs themselves will be in the game, will form their own guild, and invite anyone that's interested in joining that guild to join them for a 24-hour gaming session. Along the way in that session, players that join that guild will be offered the chance to earn certain titles and in-game rewards, which is just great. But the real core of this event is the Rift developers and Tryon Worlds doing something to help a charitable cause. To this date, no other MMO has done something in-game that can actually benefit the real world in this manner. And while they haven't exactly released the details of how the benefit side of this will all work out, as a gamer, you don't necessarily have to worry about it. You can just join the event and have fun with it. But from a developer's standpoint, if whatever partnerships they've worked out are not going to break their bank in any way, then this is an incredible bit of public relations. As I said, something I've never seen before in the MMO industry, and who doesn't love helping kids? And if you can do that while you're gaming, bonus. If you're curious and want to check out the event, I've got a link to all the details right there in the show notes. Now, one other thing that I've got in the show notes here is a really interesting article regarding monetization of the MMO industry. This article from Eurogamer basically breaks it down and shows us how over the past 10 years, 
The monetary gains of subscription-based MMOs have steadily inclined, that is, they've steadily increased until this year, where they saw a dramatic dip in overall earnings. And what took its place? Free-to-play microtransactions. I've been saying this all along. Microtransactions are clearly the way to go. They favor the player. They favor the company. Now you can see they favor the bottom line. Uh, to, to a certain degree. I, I understand that that's a generality. But really, as the profits of free-to-play games and microtransactions continue to rise and subscriptions start to see a decline, I think the writing's on the wall here. Free-to-play and subscription options with microtransactions are the way of the future for MMO gaming. The full article has a much more detailed breakdown on it. I would encourage any of you interested in this line of thinking to, to check it out yourself. Now, I realize that today's episode is actually quite a bit shorter than the typical morgue, so I wanted to include just a few more kind of fluffy stories here at the end just to, to get you guys interested in what's going to be coming in the future at some point. The first of these is that Rusty Hearts has entered open beta. So if you enjoyed my previous episode that was a hands-on preview of Rusty Hearts, I would highly encourage you to go ahead and download this and check it out. It's a free-to-play game. And they've already told us previously that anything you do in open beta will carry through after release. They're not going to do a player wipe. So you can get in right now and potentially level your character up as much as you want. Get yourself items on the cash shop. Do whatever you want. Get as many alts going and your guilds formed and all of that. Right now is the time to do it if you want to beat the rush at launch. And if you don't have any clue what Rusty Hearts is all about, I'll include a link in my show notes to the previous episode where we did an in-depth look at it. And one last bit of news and editorial nonsense here is in regards to Star Wars Galaxies. Actually, I have two bits of things to share with you. First of all, is that if you miss the deadline to get your subscription renewed for Star Wars Galaxies, I'm afraid it's already too late. I wanted to warn you guys on the show before it came up, and it just completely slipped my mind. But at this point, unless Sony decides to extend it, or unless I'm mistaken and miss something, if you haven't now subscribed to Star Wars Galaxies, it's too late. Anybody not subscribing at this point will not be able to participate in the end-of-game events that Sony's going to be hosting over the coming two months. But if you did subscribe, oh, ho, ho, have you got a treat in store for you. Not only will you be able to participate in all of these you know, oncoming live events and the Galactic War really ramping up to its climax in the middle of December, but apparently Sony is still releasing new features for Star Wars Galaxies. And not little things, either. They just added atmospheric flight to Star Wars Galaxies. I'd say, what? This is a major mechanic change. This is also more obvious evidence, sadly enough, that the developers of Star Wars Galaxies kind of got the rug pulled out from under them here on this whole cancellation hubbub. And more evidence, more indication that this whole shutdown is because of Star Wars The Old Republic. I hope there's not too much bad blood there. The Old Republic needs Star Wars Galaxies fans to go and play that game. There's such a strong, tight-knit community over there in Star Wars Galaxies. It'd be great to just have that be transplanted into a new game. And as some of you are aware, as Star Wars Galaxies draws ever closer to the eventual shutdown later this year, at some point I will be doing a tribute episode to it. The ups and downs, the NGE, the new game experience, the jump to light speed expansion, everything about it from the beginning to the fateful end. And because that's coming up a lot faster than some of us might realize, now is the perfect time for you to get your stories heard if you'd like them shared here on The Morgue. Head over to Jupiter Colony, and there's a sub-forum there for The Morgue. I think there's already a thread started regarding memories from Star Wars Galaxies. And if you'd like to reminisce with some of the old school players or the people that are still playing it, that's a great place to do so. Chances are that on that episode that we do here on The Morgue, I will be inviting players to come in and Skype in and join me to talk about some of their past experiences on the title. So if you're interested in that, be sure to let me know, either there on Jupiter Colony or send me an email at mmorgue at jupiterbroadcasting.com. And one more last bit of business before I let you go is just to warn you up front, there will not be an episode of The Morgue next week. As some of you might be aware that are fans of Jupiter Broadcasting in general, Stoked, our Star Trek online podcast, is going on location next week for its big 100th episode. And that just happens to fall on the usual time that we shoot and edit this show. So we'll be taking one week off from Morgue, and when we get back, I hope to have some really great surprises for you guys. As you know, I'm still planning a Firefall episode, a League of Legends episode, which might actually be expanded into talking about multiplayer online battle arena games in general. And I still have a review of Age of Conan coming up. So there's so much great shows coming in the future for the Morgue. Keep tuning in, and until then, everybody, play smart. And remember, don't beam down without red shirts. I have hit record.
and the internet has not melted into oblivion. So therefore, I should figure out what the hell I'm going to say.